No matter your age, your plan for retirement can start today. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Retirement Report. Good morning. Welcome to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we're going to be talking about uh, managing taxes on your retirement income today. But one of the things I want to get into as well uh, has to do with what's going on in the markets, the volatility we're seeing this year, uh, year to date. So we've seen, the, of course, the stock market has, is down. Though March was a good month, January and February were really bad months. So uh, we're still down year to date, uh, about 5 or 6%, I think it is right now. Uh, in addition, and that depends on which index you're following, if we're talking about the S&P 500 or the Russell, the small caps. Uh, but in addition, one of the things that uh, I want you to also think about is bonds are down. So when you have interest rates, when Chairman Powell gets up and talks about uh, the Federal Reserve basically is going to raise interest rates, and as they did at their last meeting, we had a quarter of a per percent change. Well, within a week of that, now a quarter of a percent is not too bad, and in fact, the market, I think uh, the expectation was uh, in particular with inflation on the rise that uh, the, the uh, interest rates would need to be raised throughout the year at a quarter of a percent at a time. So we're talking about somewhere between one to one and a half percent was the uh, uh, was the consensus. However, since that time, uh, Chairman Powell Wright, with, I think it was within a week even of that meeting, he's talking about now will to tame inflation as inflation is going ever higher. And you're talking about inflation at a 7.9 percent year over year rate. Uh, keeping in mind for it to be 7.9, that's like taking the average. That means Means, you know, you go back a year and what it was in those initial months was much lower. And now it's actually, uh, I think the estimate is about 10% is where we're actually at uh, currently to get that average of that 7.9. Okay. So what does that mean? And, and by the way, if they were calculating inflation the way they did back when Carter was president, uh, if we had the CPI being calculated the same with uh, energy and food in there, then you'd be seeing more like 16% uh, as far as an inflation. Rate. And of course, we're seeing that. We see it when we go to the gas station, right? And you're, you got $5 a gallon gas, or you go to the grocery store and you see how little, how, 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 how much those bags, you know, for a few bags, how much you're spending. So we, we see it in, in, in this cost going up, clothing, everything, of course, cars. Uh, we've talked about inflation quite a bit. Uh, so the concern is how do we, one, stay ahead of inflation and taxes? And the other is understanding what inflation means uh, when we get into policy. So the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates are saying to tame inflation to get it back down where they want it down in that two percent range then they're going to continue to raise rates and if they have to be more aggressive in raising rates they're prepared to do so and he said that you know we can go up in half point increments half a percent at a time and maybe do that four or five six times this year so all of a sudden we go from one to one and a half percent interest uh, interest rate increases to two two and a half maybe three percent even interest rate increases over this year there's a lot of concerns that come into that. I've had Phil Cosmala on has talked about that uh, recently and, and one of the big concerns of course being that if they get overly aggressive there's a, a possibility that she could tip into a recession and of course with recession we get more concerned about bear markets. They typically go together. Uh, so there's a lot of, of concerns and ways that you want to be thinking defensively. How can you protect yourself in a potential down market but also when it comes to bonds, as interest rates go up, bond prices go down. Uh, we're already seeing, as I mentioned, that bonds have dropped this year as well. And I think they're down about the, um, uh, the AGG, which is the bond index, is down about, uh, I think it's around 6% year to date, negative 6% on bonds. So this is normally thought of as a safe pivot haven. This is where you go to, where you put money, right, in your stock and bond portfolio. You may have a, a typical, say, 60-40 portfolio and 40% being in bonds to help protect yourself against volatility in the stock market. But when both are down about the same, well, actually bonds are down even more than the S&P, I think, year to date. So you, you have to start thinking a little differently. There's a research piece I have from uh, Roger Ibbotson. He's an economist. Uh, he's known for uh, his stock bonds bills and inflation chart. Lot, you know, uh, tremendous research with regard to the fixed uh, market in particular in bonds. And he talks about fixed index annuities beat out bonds over the long term. And basically how you can 
in particular with interest rates on the rise, this might be a time to take a look at your portfolio and say, maybe I want to move some of those bonds into fixed index annuities as a way to uh, reduce uh, the risk, both reduce volatility as well as uh, increase and improve your returns. And again, if you'd like to get more information, you can call my office. We can get you this research piece. We can send that to you. Uh, there's another report uh, that was done by uh, uh, Morningstar, and this has the rules of retirement spending are changing, and this talks about um, the distribution rates from your uh, retirement accounts. And this is a key piece as well. So if you'd like any of these research pieces, uh, just call my office again, 615-376-5325, and we can get those out to you. All right, now, I'm going to be talking today about managing the taxes on your retirement income. I've talked about this before on the show. I've shared this, uh, this report from the Nationwide Retirement Institute, but a little bit different take on it today, in particular with what's going on in the markets and as I mentioned in particular with bonds and inflation and rising interest rates and how much more important than ever it is when you're getting into tax planning, how to understand how these factors would uh, factor into uh, your retirement income planning. So let's start with the first one. It's on uh, today's agenda. This is, again, the... Um, uh, managing the taxes on your retirement income from Nationwide Retirement Institute. So one of the things when you uh, go into retirement is thinking in terms of how can you, min of course we want to minimize taxes anytime, right? But how can we even more so build a retirement, an efficient, tax efficient rather, retirement income plan for our retirement? So you can start that at any time, in fact, with uh, the way you, we're going to talk about asset location, for instance. And this is a great way, no matter how far out of retirement is, that you can start thinking of ways that you can better prepare yourself for tax efficient income pre-retirement as well as in retirement and in particular in retirement when those wages go away. So let's take a look at uh, today's agenda. This is the first slide uh, on uh, taxes. Your tax basics is what we're going to cover first. And this is uh, basically understanding the progressive nature of our tax system and how you can use that to your advantage. How advisors, planners use that to help their clients basically get a better, we keep more of your money in your pocket. When you think about it, it's a, you know, when you think about investing, you want to, you want to manage your risk. When it comes to taxes, you want to manage the tax risk as well. Understanding the system is the first start. So we're going to talk about the tax basics, then the importance of diverse retirement income sources. And this is what I'm talking about, tax location. And then, uh, of course, managing the conversation with that as well. So let's start with the next slide. And this one is on the tax basics. Uh, understanding first off there are two kinds of taxes okay one of those being uh, your ordinary income tax and the other being capital gains tax. And it's important to understand how these works. Ordinary income tax is applied to earnings from wages, uh, certain types of retirement accounts, uh, Social Security income, and the interest you earn on bank accounts, for example. Capital gains tax, on the other hand, is applied to investments. You're only taxed on the gain or increase in value from when you bought it to when you sold it. So now in certain circumstances, the profit from selling your home, for instance, can be subject to capital gains tax and we're going to get into more detail about that and what the exemptions are and how much so for instance it's not very common you don't really typically see that a married couple as an example has a uh, $500,000 exemption from capital gains tax so if you bought a house for 300,000 and of course in this market it could you know if that was long, many many years ago that could be worth double easily six or even triple that 900,000 so you look at what you paid for it any improvements you've made to it okay so that's adding to what we call your cost basis and then whatever you sell it for over what you paid for it and invested into it, you know, improvements, uh, that difference is your capital gain. And that capital gain is what can be subject to tax. But the capital gain has to be over 500000 right? The gain does. Not, the sell of the, not what the property sold for, but the actual amount that you gained. If it is over 500000 then the amount in which it's over is subject to capital gains tax. Of course, investment properties, second homes, those you don't have that exemption, so any profit is going to be subject to that capital gains tax. And again, we're assuming that long-term capital gains are treated differently than short-term capital gains. So we're, we're going to talk about the benefits of long-term capital gains, specifically 
likely, and this can come from investments, by the way, stocks, stock mutual funds, uh, most some bonds as well, uh, as well as profit from selling real estate. And understanding long-term gains, when you've held that, that asset for at least a, you know, one year and a day, then it's subject to long-term gains, and those rates are preferential to ordinary. In fact, let's look at the ordinary income tax rates on this next table. You can see for 2022, for a uh, married couple... Okay, uh, we're going to start on that chart on the, the the large graph or large chart there. I'm sorry. Uh, for a single, your 10% bracket. Well, let's start first with your standard deduction. This is important to understand. So if you're married filing jointly, okay, and your uh, standard deduction, in particular if you're over 60, if you're 65 or older, is 28,700 for 2022. That means the first 28,700 dollars that you make, uh, you don't pay any tax on. Okay, zero tax. Then the next, for a married couple again, age 65, the next 20,550 there on the right, right, married filing jointly, that's taxed at 10%. Now, if you add 20,550 to that 28, you're at about $49,250, almost 50,000, and all you've paid so far is 2,000 in tax on that 50,000 in income. So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, the next step is if you go from uh, to the 12% bracket. So anything over that, so first 28,700, zero tax, the next 20,000, you're paying 10%, and then the next 60,000 or 63,000, you pay 12%. So that's the progressive nature. Now I'm going to put that together for you, but first we're going to take a break, and I'll show you the difference between that tax bracket and the effective tax rate. First to break, join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.